It's a beautiful sunny day at Maverick MacGyver World Headquarters, the, AKA the welding shop. It's a 20 foot container, has solar, it's off grid. I run a Miller welder. Today the welding deck is empty, racks are gone. I've got eight new telecom shape AGM batteries and I'm gonna replace this worn out uh, Concord AGM battery bank. So it's be, it, this will be slightly smaller, um, a lot more than slightly smaller actually. I have 600 amp hours at 48 volts here. I don't effectively have that much amp hours left. I'm gonna be putting in 360 amp hours here for today. I think I'm going to just pull these out and put these in its place. I do have a plan to reorganize this power bench um, when I finish out this container. That's the next plan. And I need to clean all of this bench off and make room for the next phase of welding and building. So, a little cleanup. It's like spring cleaning in Texas, except it's January something or other. So, let's get started. Okay, step two, one, two, I don't know. Step 73. The first eight 93 pound AGMs are out. So, first one's out. Now, notice some detail here. I'll show you this detail. I can squeeze by here. I have bus bars installed and I have tapped this 48 volt battery bank in order to provide 48, 36, 24, 12, and DC negative. So whenever I build something that's based on a 12 volt or 24 volt, 36 or 48 volt system, I can actually connect it here on this bench, which is the testing bench. So I will reinstall those taps, which each tap has a breaker, um, 60 amps or so. That allows me to test uh, most things I'm doing as I build them. I will have to restore that capability. And then I'll get the other 16, I'm sorry, eight batteries from the back there, get everything cleaned out, and then uh, replace one cable, and then put it all back together. So, stand by. It's dark in here. There's no lights. Oh, no. It helps having the exact right tool for the situation and on really small hands, which I don't have. But, oh yeah, almost there. More click. Okay, that's probably good. A little ratcheting wrench is invaluable in this situation, especially if it can turn its head slightly. So, yeah. Almost there. What More progress. This negative lead was red. I went through my spares bin and found a longer black one. So, a little torque on this. Get the shunt hooked up. There we are. All right, so, yes, keep on trucking. Okay. I made a plywood bottom. Set the batteries on the little platform here. Now we're gonna test fit the gap between the batteries to make sure the bus bar fits. This is like an adjustment that barely fits. So I've got a little room. Let me see if that's loose. Yeah, I have to, I'll move this battery in like an eighth of an inch this way. You know, maintain that gap down for the rest of the batteries that have to go in there. Then I figure out the cable arrangement to get back to my, you know, taps. Now, in an off-grid case, I would never tap a 48-volt bank for a 12-volt load. That's going to happen all the time. In this case, I only power up a charge controller that's at 12 volts. To, you know, program it, test it, make sure it works. And then I'll go get uh, solar array power from the solar array, which normally charges the 48-volt side. But I can also test to make sure that the 12-volt or 24 volt, et cetera, charge controller can actually do its job before I ship it out. I wouldn't want to make a backplate and have it not work. So this is the arrangement. It seems complicated, it's quite simple in the end. All right, back to, back to work. Catching my breath, moving batteries, it's a good workout. Okay, we're in, we're in like Flynn. Here's a pro tip on these bus bars on these telecom batteries that have the uh, front terminals. It's actually a top terminal and they put this bus bar on. So 
when you start out, <clears throat> see this gap here. Uh, this bus bar doesn't really line up where, so it seems. So the trick here, <laughs> hold this tool securely in your hands. You don't want to double, you don't want to short anything out. I'm going to make sure these are loose. Now, another tip is these don't come tightened. If you don't purposely make sure they're loose in order to get your placement, you'll, you'll make a mistake because these aren't really tightened either. So you want to loosen them to make sure they're loose, but then you adjust so that your bus bar hits flat and then uh, tighten these nuts in the front first. I may even trim some of the shrink tube. See, this shrink tube right here is interfering with full contact of the bus bar to the other bus bar. So, yes, looks like I'll have to do that. Yeah, that bus bar needs to be trimmed of the uh, shrink tube. Dang it. I already put these on once. So, <clears throat> all right, here we go. Trim that, tighten that, then tighten this. Because then the caps will go on. So, let's work through the next problem. Now I need to make a couple short positive cables, so let the magic begin. Bling, sparkle, sparkle. Ta-da! Oh yeah, I like big cables and I cannot lie. Tighten it up, tighten it up. All the way. Yeah, come on. Get on there. Click. All right. Positive side is complete. Onward to the negative side. Okay. Last step. To measure that I have uh, eight batteries with 12 point something volts. And then that I have two groups of 50 something. So I have to measure each battery. 12, 12, 12. And then make sure that, uh, yeah, it's 12 point something, 12.6 or 9. Let's see here. There's 12.9. On to the next one. So, another 12.9. 12.9. Lastly, 12.9. Okay, great. Now, when I connect these two negatives, uh, this negative goes here, this negative goes there, and I'll have two, I'll parallel them together. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, stand by. Let me put this thing down so I can stop recording. Make a connection. Okay, I finished the bottom half of the taps of the battery bank. I have a 12 volt tap, a 24 volt tap, a 36 volt tap, and a 48 volt tap. This comes up to a breaker array so that um, I can turn them off individually, of course. Now, in a real off-grid system, I would not tap the 48 volt battery bank in this way because if I had a load, say, of a 12 volt device, that would un uh, unevenly load this battery down and I'd have an uneven battery bank state of charge because if this battery is only 25% state of charge, and the rest of them are 75%, they don't work at 75% anymore because the current flows through them to get 48 volts. The current flows through them all to get 48 volts. So <clears throat> I do this for testing, and I'll show you that in just a second when I get to the top half of the breaker, get it wired up, get it back over to my bus bars, and you'll see this blue wire goes somewhere, and I'll show you why I do this tap system. So stand by, gotta wire up the top half of this. I'm going to clean these wires up and make them purdy. So that's what I'll do next. All right, here we go. <clears throat> got the voltages measured. Make sure I've got the manufacturer's spec sheet. And it lists the uh, charge rate, uh, float, and absorb. So I calculated the range based on the 48-volt battery bank for float and absorb. And if I compare that with the... Uh, factory default setting for AGM on the charge controller, I get a, a, a number of 57.2, which matches the range for absorb, and float 53.6, which is a little bit low than the battery spec for standby use. But I think that's okay. I will monitor the state of charge over time. So now let's double check <clears throat> the settings on the uh, system control panel. 
So I get, get out of here, go there, go down to the charge controller and get that, go to advanced settings, charger settings. Okay, we're set for AGM. To be accurate, I'm going to lower the capacity to match uh, the capacity that I have here, <clears throat> 360 amp hours. Uh, see, it's gonna go fast if I go slow down. This is the total capacity. The usable capacity is less because it's a uh, lead acid battery. <clears throat> so we'll just monitor that. Um, bling, sizzle, sizzle. Here we are, I got it wired up. So I did 12, 24, 36, and 48. Comes up to a breaker array so I can turn on 12 volt, 24 volt, 36, or 48 volts. And then over here is where I connect the uh, devices that are being tested with the common negative there. I'm only paralleling, or I'm sorry, I'm only tapping one battery bank. The other battery bank is paralleled <clears throat> and it won't matter. I don't draw a lot of current or there is no time in amp hours draining from this bank. So it's totally copacetic. So now I have some stickers that says 48 and 36. I have 24, um, I have to find a 12 somewhere. Anyway, I made this sticker for systems. All right, so I'm gonna turn on 24 volts. So this is what I'm gonna to do today. And then I'm gonna come up here to this pre-made backplate, turn on the main breaker of the charge controller. And this is why I have this entire thing in the first place. Now I can program this classic charge controller for 24 volts. Um, so now it recognizes it's on a 24 volt battery bank, even though technically it's a 48 volt bank. I'm only getting 24 nominal. So here we are, program the charge controller. Uh, this is gonna be, full river batteries, they're AGMs. So I'll do this. The current time is 12.03. Time is a wasting, people. All right, so now this is the rest of the system. This is an industrial backplate. It's been programmed for 24 volts. I will test the functionality of this beast. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching.